Damn, and this, look at this. Look at how awesome this just turned out. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Doing something a little different today. So as you guys know, I have acquired a 360 degree shooting camera, which is actually it's this guy right here. This is a GoPro Max, so it shoots in 360 degrees. And I've been fiddling with it, trying to figure out how to edit my videos in 360, especially if you're not the one that took the footage. So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. I'm gonna just show you how I set up my workflow in Premiere Pro. This is on a PC, but it should be the same if you're using like a Mac or similar. So the first thing I do, I've got all of my 360 files. So the first thing I do obviously is convert them. And the easiest way to convert them is to open up your GoPro player and go to batch exporter. Now you don't need the GoPro player open once you got the batch exporter. And then all I do is grab all of my files, hold down the shift button, and then drop them all into there. Now it'll take a few seconds to import them. But once they're imported, there's a couple settings that you want to do. So you want to do this to all of them. So you want to select all of them by selecting your first one, scrolling to the bottom, holding down the shift button, and then pressing there. So now they're all selected. Now we still want to keep the 360 aspect of that. So we're going to leave it as Cineform. We're going to leave the resolution at 5.6K. I bump the bit rate up just so that, um, because once you take your 360 file and you convert it down to a flat image, the best you're going to get is about a 1080 picture. So a higher bit rate will give you at least the best chance to upscale that back to 4K if that's what your video is being um, played on on like YouTube or, or that sort of thing. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. I personally turn off world lock but I leave horizon level on. Now world lock uh, is hard to explain, but let's try and explain it here. So if this is my camera, world lock knows that if the camera's facing this way, for example, that whatever's this way is that way. So even if I rotate over here, world lock will keep the camera looking over here. It's actually a big pain in the butt for editing your videos. I find it's way easier to just have the camera lock on. So at first, if it's looking this way, that's where it's looking. Then if, if I turn, the camera will turn with me and look wherever it is that I'm looking. So you can play with it and decide what's best for you. But uh, for this video, we're gonna have all of our source footage, all of our source footage with world lock turned off. Okay, so once you've got all of your settings set up, then really, I don't need that window open anymore. All you're gonna do is hit the start button right here and it will start exporting your videos. Now I've already exported them, so I'm gonna hit stop. Cause this will take a while. I'll usually set this up at night and go to sleep. And when I wake up in the morning, I'll have all my 360 footage outputted into uh, these files right here. These will allow me to work with them in Premiere Pro. So the next thing we're gonna do is open up Premiere Pro. And then we're going to start a new project and I'm going to call that drifting 360 footage, just like this and say, okay. Now it's going to open up my blank canvas and then I'm going to drop all my 360 footage into there, just like that. Now what you'll notice is my footage is uh, flat like this. So it's kind of weird to watch it. I'll play it, let's just so you can see. But it looks really weird when you're looking at this footage because it's actually showing the stitched together footage of the full 360 degrees. It's hard to watch it like that. So. You're going to look for an effect called GoPro FX Reframe. Now, if you don't have GoPro FX Reframe installed, you can download it. It's for free. And we're just going to go GoPro Reframe. And then the first thing you'll get is 
thecommunity.gopro.com, GoPro FX Reframe plugin, and it's right here. You can install it for a Mac or you can download it for Windows. It'll download and then install and allow you to work with your 360 footage in Premiere Pro. So if you don't have this plugin, just go there. I'll put a link in the description so you can find it easily. But I've already got it installed. So I just did that to show you guys what it's going to look like if you don't have the plugin. If you do have the plugin, then this is what you want to do. You want to right click in this open space here. We want to create a new sequence and we want to make that in red R3D as 4K 16.9 uh, and probably 23.976 frames per second. Then we're going to find our footage. We're going to drop it. I'm going to find a longer one. So here's a nice longer one. Now the first thing you do when you drop it on is going to say, well, this doesn't match the sequence. What do you want to do? You can change the sequence settings or you can keep the existing settings. If you did the step that we just did, we want to keep those settings. Okay. So we're going to go like this. We're going to say keep. Now we can take our GoPro FX reframe plugin. I've added it to my favorites. If you don't know if you have it, just go up here, GoPro reframe and it'll pop up. Now I've created a favorites folder, so I've dropped it into the favorites so that I've always got it there because it's part of my regular workflow. So I'll drop that on here just like that. Now I'm going to go here and set this to 4k like this and now it fills up the screen. Now here's the trick. I now have a 360 video, but it's just looking through this little window right here. This is the magic of a 360 camera. So you've got all of these settings. So I can use my pan to rotate a full 360 degrees and look at whatever I want. So I can see some action over there. I can see some action over there. I can also tilt it up and down so I can look straight down at my tripod. I can look up at the sky and all of that. In this case, looking right there is fine. I can also rotate it. So if my horizon levels off I can go like this and adjust my horizon, I can also, uh, let's see. So if I zoom out, maybe I won't go quite that far like this. You can see the edges here have a bit of a curve to it. So you can adjust your lens curve like this or like this to try and square the truck out. So especially the truck, it gets some weird proportions on the edge because of the 360 effect on there. So we can adjust our lens curve until the truck looks correct. Something like that. Now you remember I said I shot this footage. I know what happened, but I'm going to pass this footage to my editor. My editor has no idea what happened. So if we watch the footage from, you know, looking out this side of the truck, well, all you're going to see is what happened that direction. We want to know what happened over here, over there, behind us, whatever. So this is where the top secret magic happens. So here's the trick that I do. So I set up my first, um, my first view exactly how I want it. So in this case, I've got it set up so that I'm looking straight forward with the truck. I've got it all in frame exactly how I want it. I've adjusted all of these settings to be how I want so that I can see roughly straight forward. Now you can use whatever view you want, but in the end, we're going to have four views that we're going to be working with. So once we get the view exactly how we want, I'm going to right click it and I'm going to say copy, or you can use a shortcut if you want. And then I'm going to paste that same view. Now, now, right now, I've got the exact same view, but now I'm going to adjust this. So I've already done all the corrections I wanted to to this video. So everything's already there. Now I want to turn this and I want to get kind of a side view like this so I can see that side of my 360 view. So now if I turn this one off, you can see there's front, there's left. Now, maybe I need to add, adjust my lens curve a little bit here because the truck's looking a little bit funny. So I'm going to adjust all that and I'm going to adjust my lens curve until the world looks more or less flat. The horizon looks flat. And that's just me. That's how I want this to be. Now you can, you can adjust yours however you want yours to be. But this is that view. Okay. Now I'm going to copy this view and then I'm going to duplicate it again. And in this case, I'm going to look the other way now. So now I'm going to go look over there. Now look, do you see, if I shut that off and I shut that off, I can see in front, I can see to my left, and I can see to my right. 
Now I want to add one more view. So I'm going to copy. And I'm going to go like this. Just to open up that other layer. And then I'm going to highlight that. And I'll paste my fourth view. Now this view, obviously, I need to see behind. So I'm going to go like, uh-oh. Now I'm going to rotate around like this. And then I'm going to look more or less straight down. Now, because of the tripod I'm using, you do get a little bit of the tripod in there. If you've got a different effect or a different tripod or whatever, it might be invisible to you. In this case, it is what it is. So now I've got behind the truck. I've got to the right of the truck. I've got to the left of the truck. And I've got in front of the truck. So I've got between the four views that I've set up, I've got almost the full 360 degrees visible so I can see what's going on. In fact, this one, I don't like it quite tipped down as much as that. I'm going to go like this and adjust it a little bit more, just like that. So now I have the same footage duplicated four times. Now, if I had more footage, then you can go like this, and I'll just drag this footage over here. You can do the same thing with all of that footage. So I would just duplicate this one four times. So I'm going to go like this and paste it there. Now these ones are all the same footage because they haven't been corrected. So I can go here, I can copy this, and I can go here and I can paste attributes like that. And then I can go to this one, I can copy this one, and then I can paste my attributes like that. And then I can go to this one, same deal, copy. And I can go here, paste my attributes, and again, do it again, copy and uh, paste attributes like that. So now, what you're going to see is, if I'm on here, so you see how here I've got this view visible. So I see the back of the truck. Same with this view here. If I turn that off, then I'll see to the right, then I'll see to the left, and then I'll see right in front. And as long as you know that the footage is all the same, just filmed, you know, in a bunch of different clips, then you can do that. Once I've got my 360 camera footage set up like this, then I highlight the whole, I highlight all those clips, I right click, and then I say, make subsequence. Then it creates this subsequence right here. I'm going to make a new item and a new sequence. I'm going to call this one going to be my main sequence that I'm going to be using. But now I can drag and drop my subsequence on here. Now, you'll notice all I can see is the back of the truck. This is where some truly magical magic happens. If I right click this and I click multicam and I enable like this, now I can see the front. So I can go to here and toggle multicam view. If you do not see that, you probably won't if you're just starting working with this. So if you don't see that, you can click this little plus button here, and then you can look for your multicam, which will look like this right here. And then you can just take that and then say okay, and then that adds it to here. Now I'm going to toggle multicam, and this, look at this. Look at how awesome this just turned out. Now I'm an editor. I was not there on the day of filming. I've got all four views right here, and watch as it plays. As it plays, I can see all four views, and I can toggle my main camera between those views. So now I can see behind, I can see to the right, I can see in front, and if I'm watching here, I can see if anything interesting happened at all. So now I see something's going on over there, so a car comes zooming by, so I can toggle between those. And then I can go over here. I can switch over to this view. I can see that I'm starting to try to go again with the truck. Now I can see there's a car behind me. So I wouldn't know. If I was on this view right here, I wouldn't know there was a car behind me. But because I can see that on this view, even if I'm watching the wrong view, I can see, okay, there's something going on behind me. Okay, good. Now you can see whatever you do here, it actually takes those changes and applies them. So if I play this back, it'll automatically toggle between those views as I was pushing those buttons. Um, 
And I don't want to get into exactly how to edit a multicam video. That's not what this is about. But the big trick that I used here was I converted my 360 footage into a multicam video. So now I can see all 360 degrees or roughly. Now, if you need, if you thought there might be something happening up in the sky, obviously you could set a view up at the sky. You can have as many camera angles as you want. I prefer working with four simply because it does uh, allow me to see the full 360 degrees of what I think I need the action for. And that's basically how I start working with my 360 camera footage. So uh, make sure you get your color correction all set first and all of that and then you create that subsequence. You just convert it to a multicam and then you process your footage running off of that multicam. That's the easiest way that I can find, especially if you weren't there or you don't remember what happened. So you don't have timestamps to go to and look around and check stuff out. It makes the editing process so much easier when you're trying to convert it into a standard video that's fit for um, like YouTube or other media formats. You can use it on your Instagram or whatever if you don't wanna use the on-camera editing tools that are available. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together you'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.